And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where the Rangers welcomed three new faces to their lineup. Suddenly they're faced with having to overcome the most stunning loss of the year. 7-4 the final in New Jersey. Rangers lose after taking a 2-0 lead. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valaket inside our Delta MSG studios. This came after two games in which the Rangers allowed one goal against yeah. Tampa and Carolina. And yet tonight they gave up a touchdown to the Devils. I think a lot of it is just the circumstances. And I think that sometimes human nature is, is okay, you've got three new guys that are going to come in here with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, let them take it over, and we'll take our foot off the gas a little bit. It's indicative to me when the Rangers don't get their first power play until the third period that they're not playing the right way. Uh, I think they thought the game was going to be easy when Fox scored what I thought was a bad goal, the goal number two. And I think everybody thought it was going to be easy. But as we've seen in this league, uh, will is going to beat skill if skill doesn't work. And sometimes skill just has to be reminded that there's work to be done and smart work to be done to carry themselves through a game and not just think it's going to be an easy night where they'll all just get their cookies. And that wasn't the case. Yeah. Well, they're coming off two really strong wins on the road. And they look well prepared. They play a really strong for first period. The, the difference between the two teams in the first was not that big, but it still looked like the Rangers were able to score goals when they wanted to. They got a comfortable 2 nothing lead. Yeah. And to your point, I think they felt like this, this is going to be a night where we can kind of cruise through it. But the Devils really upped their game in the second period. The urgency was way up. and, and it just turned the table completely in the second period. And, and at the same time, it looked like the Rangers lost their focus a little bit with the details, blue lines, losing the puck and going a lot with chance, you know, when they try to pass puck cross ice. And, and uh, it's definitely a lesson learned uh, for mm -hmm. sure. But it also shows how big of a difference um, just attention to details can do for you. You know what I was From thinking one too? One to another. Sorry to cut you off, Hank. I they almost met their goal where they got help from management after the two games and really the season up until this point where the players earned it. And maybe part of that is that too, where it just sinks in like, oh, we can take a deep breath. We got our help at the deadline and okay, we got 18 more games after this one to run this thing out. Maybe they just kind of hit their goal, they got it, and now it's a reset to set a new goal, which is gonna be, Getting prepared for what could be your playoff opponent mm -hmm. on Friday in the Pittsburgh Penguins. Right, yeah, and just maybe what makes it even more exasperating is when you consider the way this game began. It took only a little more than seven minutes for the Rangers to take the lead, which they would double soon after that. But the lead came off the stick of a guy who has continued <clears> to <throat> produce this year and in that tight spot in front of the net, Mika Zibanejad again cashing in. I just thought that this forecheck was what we had really talked about in the pregame, uh, coming in with a lot of pressure shooting and in a lot of ways it reminded me of the way that Carolina played the Rangers the other day where it's first shot at the net Lafreniere follows up his play this is a very mature play he beats two devils recovers the puck that allows Kreider time to get in on the forecheck and you're you know seven eight minutes into a game where you're saying wow we're running it here Kreider then follows up as a high F3, and he punches this off the far pad, so Zabanajad can get to that weak side of the ice. He has an open look, and it looks like it's gonna be a pretty easy night. I mean, they made that play look pretty easy. Sometimes it's hard to know if the Rangers are playing well and the Devils are playing bad. I felt like in the first period, the Devils were sitting back a little bit, maybe a little too much respect for yeah. the Rangers' record. And then in the second period, they really you know, they were way more aggressive. So I, I think they made it a little easier for the Rangers in the first period to dominate the way they did and create the chances that they actually created. Yeah, and the Rangers had another chance not long after that goal, less than five minutes later, and it was Adam Fox off a face-off win from one of the newest Rangers, uh, Andrew Kopp, and that gave the Rangers a 2 nothing lead, Steve. It's a face-off goal, and again, a good sign because it's another layer of offense. We talked about the four-check offense. Now we're talking about face-offs. The Rangers have had 12 goals that have come directly off the face-off this year. That ranks 10th in the NHL. So a nice note there. I just didn't think this was the greatest goal. Uh, outside the dots for a right-handed shooter to beat a goaltender from there, it doesn't happen often, which I think also bleeds into the belief of the 
team at that time because, look, you're on the bench and you're like, okay, Foxy's just going to beat him from outside the dots over his far side shoulder. The goalie was off angle. He ducked. He didn't look like a real NHL goalie. And you're saying to yourself, we got Shesty, Nico does. We'll take that matchup all right. night. And I think, again, the players took it lightly. But that faceoff, we saw it a couple times again in the third period. So a good sign from Cop. We knew he's a good faceoff guy. And it's a... You know, it, it's a thing that's going to really help you in, in tight games, deciding time of a game, especially in the playoffs, to have a guy like that that can yeah. also put Mika in a good spot to shoot instead of being in the face-off circle. He can now be a shooter or a passer, so he adds another element to their offense when it comes to a face-off. Yeah, so that gave the Rangers a 2-0 lead after one, and then came the second period. And since it's a family program, we'll say WTH. <laughs> what the heck happened in that second yeah. period, Steve? Well, you, you really canceled my parade plans, first of all, because <laughs> I thought this was just—I thought we were just going to coast the rest of the way through the season with no speed bumps. It got hard, and it—it uh, it was really a period that. You want to forget, but at the same time, you got to remember and get a reminder here where if you don't play a detailed game and get it deep when you're up by two goals, you're going to start eating it. What the coaches are going to take away from this, John, we lost the net front battle game because all of these goals here are net front battles that are lost. You're not boxing out. You're not getting sticks. You're looking around. And now you got P.K. Slubin scoring from the point. And same thing on Mercer's goal. It's another play that gets kicked out to the point. And who's there all alone off that weak side post? We talked about Zibanejad doing it. That's where most rebounds are going, guys. It's a wide open net, unchecked is Mercer. I think the coaches are going to look back at this one from a teaching standpoint and say, guys, we lost the net front game yeah. to the Devils as well. And that's a mindset. And that's focus. And it happens when, you know, you had that first period coming off two good games on the road and you just had a little letdown. Mm -hmm. It's important, too, not to overreact and, or overanalyze this game. It was a, a bad stretch, no question, for, what, 12 minutes in the second period and they couldn't really recover from that. But... There was also signs, first period, also a little pushback in the third, showing us what, what the Rangers can do. But that stretch in the second period, it was all about, all about focus and, and determination from both sides. Mm -hmm. more, more so from the Devils <laughs> and the lack of it right. from the Rangers. Right. So four goals in a span of six minutes, then another goal less than five minutes later, and that turned it 5-2. Rangers showed a pulse early in the third, 5-3, and could have made it closer, and it's the focus of our All-State Mayhem moment. And here's what happened. Midway through the third, Rangers thought they could have cut it closer. Two-on-one shorthanded. Kreider chose to pass it back the other way to Zabanajad. Didn't click, and now Hughes comes down three-on-two. Pauses, waits, gets it back from Heischer, and he scores. So just like that, it went from possibly 5-4 to a 6-3 lead in what was a 7-4 win.